I want you to think about a room of first graders. And a question you would ask a room of first graders, how many of you want to grow up and be customer service representatives? <laughs> exactly. Zero. More likely, if you ask a group of first graders this question, they may answer with something to the effect of, I would like to be able to do things to help people. I would like to be in a role where I have purpose. I want to grow up and I want people that I can work with and I can support them. This is what I want to be able to do. See, those two scenarios are not very different. Both of those groups have to show empathy. Both of those groups have to be able to connect and respect people. Both of those groups have to be able to essentially connect with human beings. Now, I will tell you, customer service was not on my roadmap either. Even though I spent my career in customer service, that's not necessarily what I thought I was going to do. I was not destined to be a customer service representative, but somehow I ended up in this path. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about what's not on the screen right now. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll be get there. Now, I will tell you, about the age of 13, I started to show some traits in customer service. Two things started to take shape in my life. Technology and customer service. These two things were so important. And I'll tell you why. Because when I was 13, I had, just like a lot of children that age, a paper route. And it was really important when I delivered those papers that the headline was facing the customer's door when they opened it. It was really important for me on days that it was raining that the newspaper would stay dry. And then, on special occasions like holidays, I would put flowers on the newspaper and sometimes a little note. See, that was important to me. And the reason why it was important to me was because I thought about those customers that lived alone and what it might mean to them. And it actually started to make something happen inside my heart. Now, I'll tell you, at the exact same time, I got my first PC, a Commodore 64. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I would program for hours on end so I could play a two-minute game. And I was fascinated, and I was hooked, and it was absolutely amazing. It was amazing for me that the technology was just opening up a whole new world for me. That was amazing. And it was very amazing because this is not something I ever thought I would go into, but I loved it. Those two areas, technology and customer service. And that's me. <laughs> And I will tell you that fast forward a few years, and I was the first one in my family to go to college. And I got that business degree, and I remember thinking, I am going to go out and make a difference in this world. I am going to do something incredible. I'm not sure what, but it's going to be big. And I remember that, and I was so proud. And the first thing I started to do was go, we're good. OK. First thing I started to do was I worked a job, and at night, I would teach word processing and spreadsheets, and I would teach computer science. I even taught a Windows class for senior citizens, and that was very joyful. <laughs> and I will tell you, I, I wanted to be so connected to business and technology, and I started to see how it was going to be an enabler. And then one of my very first jobs out of college was this. This is me. Now, not destined to be a customer service representative, but something happened. I saw a job at an amazing company, and the job was very specific. The job was to help launch the systems that were necessary for the group to collect customer information. Very technical. For the time, they were called case management systems. Oh, and by the way, this was the side gig, answering customer phone calls. So I took the job, and the title was Customer Service Representative. Now, let me tell you, I said to myself, two years. 
two years, I'll be in this job. Then I'm going to go to a department that matters in the company, like marketing, IT, or digital engagement. See, because customer service representatives aren't necessarily a word or a title that you say without saying it a little sheepish, or at least in my view. And so I said, this is what I'll do. I'm going to move on. And then something happened. Two years turned into 20. And I'll tell you why. So one day I took a call from an elderly gentleman and I worked at a quick service restaurant and he said, I'd like to know if the restaurant near my home would be open on the upcoming Thursday. So in those days, we hung up the phone, I got on my directory, I found the phone number of the restaurant, I called the restaurant, I talked to the store manager, I got the hours, I hung up the phone, I picked up the phone, I called the customer, and I relayed those particular hours to him. Now, I just want you to think about that scenario 20 years ago, right? That almost seems absurd today, almost to the point of crazy. Because how many of you have a smartphone or do not have a smartphone, I should ask? How many do not have a smartphone? And very few hands will go up because 90% of adults in the United States today use the smartphone and an internet, right? We use this because we are in a whole different state of communication. And this is important because this has changed how we think and how we work. So I quickly went to work and I quickly started to make a difference. So I believed in something called contact optimization. So with my business skill and with my computer skill, I would look at all the reasons why somebody would contact the company, and I would segment. And I would say, how many could be self-served now that technology was evolving, and how many of them could potentially um, just be offloaded by the way that we offer information? And every time I did this, there was a little segment of contacts and reasons for contact that needed a human connection. But I felt so um, proud because I had figured out the magic formula. Thank God I went to business school because I know now how to differentiate in business. And I was out telling the world, here's a short video that I was telling everyone how we could succeed in business. And there it is. Okay, in that video, what I am saying is this. <laughs> And I will say it because I remember it because I was telling the world. As fast as things are moving in the industry that we work in, the only differentiator sometimes comes down to a couple of things. Great customer service and innovation. The only differentiator some kind, sometimes comes down to two things. Great customer service and innovation. I had figured this out and I was telling the world and I was so excited about it because I was putting in automation, I was driving advances, technology was moving fast and life was good. It was good for the customer. But now I want to take you back a little bit to that story that I told you. Why did I stay in customer service? Sometimes when I tell this story, it chokes me up a little bit, but when I got back on the phone with that elderly gentleman and I said, here's the hours of operation on that Thursday. You know, I was proud, proud of my KPIs, proud of my average service time, proud of my accuracy. I was a good customer service rep and they told us this is what we should work toward. They told me what was important. So the elderly gentleman said to me very quietly and a little bit of sadness in his voice and he said, this is where I'm gonna be eating on Thanksgiving. And we po politely ended the call. See, someone told me once if something moves your heart, then a problem turns into a human. And that's what happened to me. I stayed in customer service because I love technology and I started to love human beings. And I realized that not all companies were doing this because our technology advancement has been amazing, but we have now stagnated our human connection. This is the time that we need to be connected more and we're actually void of human connection. This is when we need to work together, and on both sides of that phone call are two human beings. So a recent uh, CEO a few months ago said the most profound thing, and I loved it. And what he said was, customers are in a need state of convenience. They're in a need state of convenience. So that means 
ease, transparency, convenience. That's what customers are in a need state. It's not a nice to have, it's now a need state. But what I so wanted to hear has, is that that was then being counterbalanced with a need state of human connection. And I didn't hear that, and I'm not seeing that. I've been in this industry enough to know that there are companies that are making a difference. See, we do things like this. This was a few months ago. This is a $60 million rocket. Went up to space, and it came back completely intact, and it landed. And this particular rocket can be reused because it didn't burn up into entry. Now, I want you to think for a minute. Isn't that brave of a civilization that we set the bar so high and we're achieving it with technology, engineering, innovation? But are we doing the same on the human side? Did we keep up with it in the last 20 years? That's what I'd love to know. Have we kept up with it? And I don't think we are. I don't think we are because of a lot of reasons. See, I've been in this business a long time. And I have every role from the CSR up to the executive level. And I can tell you, we can operationalize feedback. We can make things better. We can make advances on your digital devices like No Tomorrow. The automation is amazing. Companies that are succeeding today, they can anticipate customer needs, right? They can set expectation. They can do all of these amazing things. They can use business intelligence and predict what you want. But what have we not done equally as well? We have not humanized the customer journey. See, I love to tell you how many packages didn't get delivered, because I can tell you that. I can tell you very quickly also how many credits didn't get posted. But you know what I can't tell you? I can't tell you why that gentleman was eating alone on Thanksgiving. And I should have known to send him a handwritten note, call the store manager, have him spend a few minutes on Thanksgiving with him, or better yet, I could have spent a few minutes with him. That's never happened to me again, because I have changed my heart. I can also tell you that those credits that didn't get posted, but I cannot tell you that maybe there's a student that couldn't go visit a sick friend because he didn't have the bus fare in his account. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that a package that didn't get delivered has incredible disappointment now from a father who can't give his daughter the birthday gift she promised because it didn't arrive. But I can tell you the package didn't get there. See, that's what's missing from the whole evolution of customer service. Now, I'm going to show you something, and I want you to look at that. This is a typical customer service representative job description. Let's take a look at this. Very transactional in my mind. Listen to customers' questions and concerns, provide answers, provide information about products, take orders, calculate charges, process billing or payments, review or make changes to your account, handle returns, record details of customer contacts. Oh, and by the way, if it gets really difficult, escalate it to someone else. Now, I have to ask you, do you think that this was written for a job today in customer service or 20 years ago. This is the same job description from both time periods. See, we've evolved, but we haven't evolved on the human side, and this is where the opportunity is. Now, I want to show you something. This is what I'm doing with the companies that I work with. We drive transformation on the human side. Why can't we hire and train for this? Understand the customer's story. Solve in a way that makes sense to recover the customer to the brand. Share the customer feedback or insights to help prevent similar customer issues. How about show empathy and care? And I love this statement, offer kindness without conditions. See, this is where we should be going. We've evolved on the technology side, and I love that, and I've been part of it, and it makes me so happy to use these devices and to see this advancement. But what I don't see is this connection, and I want to see that desperately. Why do I remember that call from 20 years ago? Because I don't even know where that man is today, but I want to know the story. 
And after that call, with every customer I connected with, I started to know the story. And I started to teach people around me and those, and when I was a leader, to also learn the story. But this is our defining moment, folks. This is it in customer service. We are at an inflection point, and it's staring us right in the face. Now, there are three million customer service representatives in this country right now. Three million. These are brave, frontline people that answer phone calls, emails, chats, text messages, social media. And the National Bureau of Labor says this is growing 5% of a year. See, remember my contact optimization? I wasn't able to automate everything. Something still needs a human. This is why we have 3 million. And by the way, this doesn't include all the people who have customer service as part of their job, but it's not the core responsibility. So these folks are hardworking, frontline folks, and if you train them and you elevate them, you will see a difference. So conservatively, they're doing 200 million contacts a day in this country, a day. Now imagine if we trained these folks, for some of the skill I showed you recently. And imagine what your experiences would be like. Could we change the customer service feeling in this country if we did that? And I know we can, because I have driven this transformation with companies. I work with leaders now, and the reason why they connect with me to help them is because, we heard it earlier today, perspective matters. Had I not had that headset on, and had I not connected and had every level in customer service, I would never have known what it feels like to have my seat and a headset and what those agents are going through. And this is our opportunity. As leaders in this country, we have to take the charge and start elevating the customer service group to a department that matters. It is a department that matters just like IT and marketing and digital engagement. And that's where we need to go. So I'll leave you with this. If we do this right, and this is our opportunity, in a few years, when we're sitting in a room of first graders, and we say, who wants to be a customer service representative, we might just see a few hands go up. Thank you.